if you've ever wondered what a conversation between two clear channels sounds like, you won't want to miss this episode of Becoming the Channel, the podcast. I am joined by my special guest, Miriam Wiederman, who is a renowned galactic astrologer. And if you were listening to Jennifer Longmore's Clear Summit channel a couple of weeks ago, you would have heard her there. And that's where we actually connected for the first time. This conversation I had with her was quite illuminating. And I know that you will enjoy listening to our conversation about what it means to be a clear channel the worry about things like, am I going crazy or am I making it up in my head and how she navigated those very issues in her own life. And then her perspective on what's going on on the planet right now. These are just important conversations. If you are an awake, intuitive person and you know you're here to make a difference in the world, Miriam brings forward a sense of sacred urgency for such a time as this. And it's my honor to have her on the podcast. So with that, let's get on with the show. And we're back with another episode of Becoming the Channel. Thank you so much for joining us. I have a very special guest with us today. Miriam, thank you for joining us. Hi, Robin. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited for our conversation. I think we have a lot to share. I know that we do. And I think that our guides are going to be here as well, probably giving us the two of us new information as well. Miriam, you may have heard her on the recent Clear Channel Summit that Jennifer Longmore hosted and Mother Malia, of course. And that is really where I got to know you. I think we were on a round table together, weren't we? Yeah. I feel like that was the case. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I- Yeah. But the reason I wanted to have you on is because you have such a compelling perspective on channeling. And one of the things that I have heard from a lot of people lately is something that I address all the time, which is I have mental health issues or mental illness in my family history. And I'm worried about that I'm going crazy or I'm making it up in my head. And what will people think in all of those things? So I would just love to invite you to just open up your channel and share with us your perspective on channeling, because I know you have a whole lot to share about that. Yeah. um, Yeah, it is an interesting thing. And um, for me, I think I I am an intuitive. I know that. But for a long time, I shut that down because I was both fascinated and frightened by my intuition, by the channeling, actually, because I have a family history of so-called mental illness. And I didn't want to be, uh, go crazy. And I was fascinated because, you know, I could see the worlds beyond unfold. And uh, I was frightened of the abyss that opened up and uh, the misguided energy, you know, of rage and fury. Because that often comes when you do not understand what's happening with you and you have no guidance or a safe space to really embrace what is coming into you. When um, did you know in your life that you were quite different from other people in terms of how you viewed the world and your perspective? I knew that very early. And I got, interestingly, I I knew when I was diagnosed with short-sightedness because I couldn't see. I, I just couldn't see. I was a, a half-blind child that was stumbling around and still finding its way. And so I thought, okay, so I'm perceiving the world differently than everybody else. And my clear sense is clairvoyance. Um, (laughs) Why um, do you need to see the outside world when what's actually there is so vivid for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was always connected to my inner world. And I know now that uh, this inner world is part of uh, an aspect of my soul that is connected to inner earth, actually. So I've been traveling back and forth my whole life. Back and forth between from here to inner earth. And when you say inner earth, can you tell us about that? I have found out through galactic astrology, but before that, intuitively through some shamanic uh, travels, I did that there is a colony of, and now it's getting woo already. Yes. Uh, There is a colony of Alpha Centaurians from the fixed star system Centaurus. And they have come to Earth a very long time ago. I believe it was before Atlantis. And some of them were involved with the fall of Atlantis and the, the people who, the Alpha Centaurians that were able to save themselves went into inner Earth and founded a colony there. This is very interesting that you're bringing this forward because when we were in Sedona in 
late September, early October. Well, you know, I live close to Sedona, so I'm there a lot. And every time I hike in Sedona, I see the ancient ones. And I, up until September, I thought that they were, I don't know how I understood them to be, but I understood them differently after this retreat in Sedona when, and I'm wondering about this, if these are the same beings, because what I was seeing is that there is an entire ancient, I'll call it civilization under the earth. And I think what I'm seeing, I know what I am seeing when I'm there is they are there with us and walking, they come up and they can be seen if you know what to look for. Does that make sense what I'm sharing? And is that, that the makes, same crew? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it makes yeah. complete sense. And we all know that Sedona is a vortex and there is a, there is a connection to inner earth. Yeah. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. it's interesting in Sedona, one of the things that I've known for a while is that there's an ancient group, they're called the Anasazis. And I was listening to a man tell the story of the Anasazis. And in the story, he said, and then one day they just disappeared. And I said, where did they go? And he said, of course, what most humans would say is we don't know, but you and I, I think, know that they went underground to the inner earth. So what is their role and what is your role with them today? I think their role is mostly they help with our ascension because they are very evolved and they, I believe they are the guardians of earth in a way together with many um, mythical creatures that live there. So I have connections with dragons and, and also, which I find very interesting, the whales and dolphins, they can move between those world as, worlds as well. So this is just a beautiful view to watch those whales in inner earth. They, they fly on the sky, they float on the sky, and then they go back to earth. So they are guardians of, of our planet as well, as we know. And the inner earth civilizations, they help with, I think, with more ecological and with the ecological processes on earth, help earth clean and help earth heal too. And my role, I am connected to a kind of priestess there, a priestess aspect of mine. And I think that when, when I got aware of that, my channeling just started to really, really unfold. So it was a beautiful confirmation for me when through galactic astrology, I found out that all of that was kind of true. And and as soon as you get more aware and more conscious of yes. what's happening inside you, the better your abilities uh, will get. And the more, because you're more connected, you're more in tune with them. You're just, you are it, let's say. You are well, the channel. Well, yes, you are the channel. I was going to say... There, gosh, I have like a million questions that are just sitting here waiting to be asked. Oh, let me just focus. So yes, I remember when Marisol, my channel came in two months ago, a little over two months ago, fully came in. And since then, I've been just shown all of these things in my life that didn't really make sense up until now. And now I understand there's always more to understand. Please don't get me wrong. I just... I understand so much more of my life and it makes so much more sense than it did even two months ago. So it's fascinating how when you become fully aware of and I think integrated with your channel, how much different life can be in terms of making sense of yourself in the world. And then you feel more grounded, actually. You know, yes. you know, there is this perception of channels being somewhere out there. Yes. It's not the case. It's actually the complete opposite. I feel more grounded than ever on, on Earth. Mm. I feel more Same. grounded in myself. Yeah. Well, because you also know what your purpose is fully. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So let's talk about galactic astrology because... Well, and I was telling you before we started recording, I have always had such a hard time with astrology, with I'll call it regular astrology. I don't know what else to call it. Yes. I've always felt like whenever I've had a reading, I've been fire hosed and all this information comes in and I'm not sure what to do with it all. And it doesn't, it just doesn't land for me. Although I do love to read horoscopes, please don't mistake me. So what is galactic astrology and maybe how is it different from the astrology that most of us are familiar with? Yeah. Galactic astrology is actually an ancient science. And I have to say, I had problems with astrology as well. I always found it very interesting and intriguing on one hand. And on the other hand, I thought this is something so incomprehensible, so opaque, because yes. there's so much information behind it. It is a, it is a, 
book of seven seals for me. Yes. <laughs> and as channeling, as everything, it just came so natural to me. I had a galactic astrology session myself and it blew me away. And it actually did something that happens in my sessions now as well. It opens up new or... <laughs> No, not new, but it reconnects you to your galactic gifts, let's say. But I'll start from the beginning, probably. <laughs> so it is an ancient science, galactic astrology. It is uh, an extension of our classic astrology. In classic astrology, we look at the um, 10 planets, as we call them in our solar system. These are the influences. These are the players in our in our field of life, let's say. And in galactic astrology, we add some of the fixed stars of our galaxy, of the Milky Way galaxy. There are millions, billions of stars. We know that. And we have, we know a lot of, of them, but I am, I am including around 150 stars, more or less. And we have a lot of channeled information about these stars and what life forms exist there. And so what I do, I do a, a two-part process. I access the Akashic records of the client. And I do that before I look at the charts, I have to say, so to make sure it really aligns. And in the Akashic records, I, I trace, let's say, a soul journey, the soul journey or the soul history of the client, when and where it's, his soul arrived in our galaxy. And, some, and with what energy the soul came in and what stations the soul took until it decided to come here to earth, to incarnate here. And uh, then I look at the, as the alignments of the fixed stars with our planets and uh, then I can confirm is the story straight? Did I get it right? And then I talk to the client and then the real journey starts because there are so many age-old memories that arise during the sessions in our consciousness and so mm -hmm. it is a beautiful it is a beautiful addition to the normal or the classical um, astro chart we have because it it expands uh, the consciousness and it, it, it expands um, the client's connection to to his or her soul and that is just so beautiful this is just so beautiful, especially for such a time as this, because we have a lot going on on our planet right now, and we have big missions that we are being called to. So can you speak to, from your perspective, what is going on on the planet right now and why it's so important for the light workers and the light leaders to rise into that most expanded version of themselves? Yeah, I think there are some astronomical and physical things happening at the same time. And uh, I think that plays very beautifully into the, our channeling experience too. So as you may be aware, our solar system entered into what we call a photonic belt that is uh, connected to the Pleiades. I don't want to go too deep into this, but this photonic belt entry that happened around 2012 started a 2000 year cycle <laughs> that we are going to experience here on earth. And this opens up our consciousness big time. And the photonic belt uh, emanates photonic particles that are connected to our consciousness. That's so interesting because photons are packets of light. Exactly. Yes. And, and when so of, course, of course, we're going to be receiving and responding to new packets of light, being enlightened or illuminated as a result of being in this photonic belt. This is fascinating. Thank you for that. It is. And uh, I want to add, uh, because uh, this must be of interest for you, when it was discovered, it was called the, it was called the Golden Nebula. <laughs> of course, the golden light. Exactly. And you know, my channel, Marisol, channels the Soleil. Soleil, yes. not the sun, but Soleil, the, the true sun. And I believe, this is Robin, I believe that this is Vega from the, the Lyran constellation, which I believe is a bigger part, a part of a bigger constellation that will be revealed. So it's all fascinating how the golden light is coming in. Does that make sense to you? It does. Because I think, well, the, the, our rotation, the solar system's rotation go, uh, rotates around 
uh, the central sun as well. And this would be a very interesting conversation. I think. Yes, let's go ahead and do this conversation about the central sun. Go ahead. Please begin. So I believe that our sun and the sun of each solar system is connected, is a port. It is connected to, firstly, to the center of our galaxy, which is supposed to be a supermassive black hole, but I believe it is actually a, a portal too that leads to the central sun of the universe. And this is a God consciousness, of course. It is the, the creation and source from all of us. For our universe too. So through our sun, we are connected to through many portals to to our divine self. And therefore, I find it very important to be connected to the, to sun consciously and deliberately. Yes, it's so important. In fact, every day, I think it's one of the reasons I live in, where I do in Arizona because we get so much sun. And every day, I'm out in the sun. I've even stopped wearing sunglasses. So that yeah. I'm getting more expo more more proper exposure to the sunlight because it's so valuable and vital to my system. Yeah, this is the worst thing we can do: wear sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why do you say that? I have my my ideas as well, and I can talk about them. But what's um, the sun, what's the thing with sunglasses? Well, on a physiological level, it opens up your irises because the sunglass uh, is dark, so the, uh, the the eyes open and it can damage your the inside of your of your eyes. But I believe that sunlight is pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. And why would we why would we shut this out? And I know from experience when I'm in sunlight, my eyesight gets better mm -hmm. and and it is it is divine consciousness. We are there are so many ancient this depictions of sun let's say in in old egyptian reliefs you can see the sun ra mm -hmm. and it's peaks going directly to the pharaoh and his family and it enlightens us as you said it is it is so natural for us to be in the sunlight and to really admire it Yes. And yet we've been, what's the word that I want to use? There's been a lot of anti-sun propaganda, I would say, in the last years, keeping us out of the sun, keeping us away from the sun, blocking us from the sun. And so, in other words, perhaps blocking consciousness as well. And you and I, of course, are on a mission to change this. Yes, we are. And others like us are on a mission to change that. I would love to speak more or have you share with us any wisdom or information your own channel has about the state of the planet today, how we can become more, just how we can become more active, I think, in our own missions and any other messages that she might have to share with us. Well, that would be a, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'd love that. So from, I would like to add from a galactic or from an astrology perspective, Yes. No, galactic astrology per perspective, actually. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I have received some information about that. So the most important alignment I've been talking about this for weeks and months now is Pluto is going into Aquarius on 21st of January for the second time. And finally, on 19th November 24. And then it stays there for 20 years. So it's a long cycle ahead of us nothing compared to other cycles we are immersed in, but still. And uh, this is going to radically shift us as a human society. And I believe um, it is going to shift us in ways that we haven't uh, really embraced yet. So Aquarius is about, amongst other things, it is about aliens, actually. So when Pluto goes into Aquarius, we are not only deciding what way our society wants to what path it wants to take and i believe we have to be on a path of peace and togetherness and cooperation and it is important because our galactic family is waiting for us to grow up and to finally leave this paradigm of war and opposition and the more let's say patriarchal ways of being and really really start to grow up as a society and when we do that we will be greeted happily by our uh, galactic family because we are supposed to evolve we are supposed to ascend and i think ascension is part of being our galactic family and what my aspect in inner earth says it's 
they they are such a peaceful and grounded civilization there and very much connected they are all channeling and they already are in tight contact with the beings outside earth and they want us to become part of their family and they are waiting for us and they're looking forward to meeting us directly and as you said they are already here they are amongst us and so it, it's, it's always good to keep the eyes open, therefore no sunglasses, <laughs> because you never know if you meet someone from inner earth. That is so beautiful. I'm wanting to ask about water. What do you, what can you tell us about the water and why is that important right now? Like the sunlight, it is kind, it is a liquid manifestation of life. Like sunlight is the, how do you say, the ray emanation of Divine consciousness, water is the liquid divine consciousness. And water is not only supposed to be part of our body, but also of, of, of our consciousness. And we have to say, you know, you have to be more in flow. Mm. You have to be more <laughs> yes. fluid. Yes. <laughs> and uh, this is part of the water consciousness. It is, it is a crystal clear channel, actually. Water is a crystal clear channel. And so when we, I'll say consume, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but consume water, then that assists us in our clarity of channel as well. I believe so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it's not only one of the four elements. It is kind of what I receive. It is kind of an emanation of, of the sun or of light mm -hmm. other than maybe earth and fire and wind that are that have come later water was first water was first but light water came from light it is an aspect yeah that's the yes. word I want. it's an, an aspect of light and it keeps the light we know that yes it holds the light that is beautiful i've also heard that water on this earth on this planet contains the Akashic record of the planet. Is that information that you can expand on or have a different perspective on than that? This could easily be true because, and I think that other and other elements on earth keep certain parts of the Akashic records of the earth as well. And I was oh, I saying- I see. So it's not, it's not the only record keeper of the no. earth then. It is one of the, as an element, it is but one I, of the record keepers. Mm -hmm. But it is the most complete, let's say. The mm -hmm. others are more specialized, if if you will. I can't find the right word. But I was talking about the whales and dolphins before, right? Because yes. they are able to, they are able to travel between inner earth and earth. And inner earth does not have to be natural. Does not have to be really inside earth. We know that it is a it is a dimensional thing as well. So they are interdimensional travelers, and that's what that's that's something that water can do as well. It can travel interdimensionally, and it keeps interdimensional information too. That is fascinating. I just had this insight of water coming back as a messenger from yeah. another dimension. That is beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yes. same information. <laughs> yes. That's so wonderful. Well, I'm reflecting because, you know, this, this podcast is called Becoming the Channel. And we're talking about some very interesting things <clears throat> that some people will feel very connected with and fascinated by. And one of the things that I hear a lot, and I think I mentioned this earlier, but I want to bring it back to us right now is being worried about what other people might think of us when we are channeling such different information that is what is typically available to, we'll say the mainstream or to, we'll call them in air quotes, normal people. <laughs> and I have my own perspective on this and I'd love to have this part of the conversation because it's almost, it's kind of a meta level, two channels talking about channeling, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I love that because there aren't uh, many, well, I live a normal life, a normal life. Yes, yeah. whatever that means these days. Whatever that means. <laughs> so I love uh, exchanging views and I love channeling together, actually. Yes. I love that uh, fluidity that is yes. between us. 
the moment. It's so fun to have the the inner earth here and then to have Soleil here through Marisol is just so fun to to be together. And I was thinking that I live a pretty normal life too. You know, I walk my dog every day and I pay my bills and I do those things, but I would rather be channeling than anything else. How about you? Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm, I love that state actually. Yes. And um, I have more and more come to have the channeling state as a kind of natural, um, a natural thing that I grew into and uh, the more I became familiar with it, the more it becomes daily routine and part of myself. And that is really beautiful. Yeah, it is for me too. I remember when Marisol has been with me forever, by the way, it's not, it's just yeah. in, being integrated, but she's been here with me. She has shown me all the times in my life when I actually required her presence in order to get out of a sticky situation or something like that. But only recently has, have I been as a physical being ready to receive her. And it's funny, she came in in the same year I created this podcast called Becoming the Channel. So there must be something to that as well. <laughs> but I used to wonder about after she came in, is she going to leave me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, she of course has reassured me and it's part of my journey to trust the channel as well. But I think that there are all of those fears that we can speak to, not to amplify them, but just to sort of shed light on something that our secret fears for people who know that they're meant to channel, who know that they are channels, but still have a trepidation about it. What would you advise them? Before I say that, I see the sunflowers, you know, the, <laughs> and you know, they yes. are moving their heads towards the sun. Yes. I see Marisol and all the sunflowers looking at you all yes. the time. The whole life. You yes. Know. All the time. The sunflowers. I have I have pictures of myself in sunflowers. I used to live in Kansas, which is all sunflowers. And I would watch the sunflowers turn their heads toward the sun. And Marisol has always been with the sunflowers. In fact, I just got pictures taken recently with the field of sunflowers as well for her. They are beautiful. Yes. And I can't stop smiling when we talk about this, of course, because it's such a joyful experience. Back to your question, though. Yes. Um, I had the support of very caring and committed people with experience in channeling and with baby steps, you know, I, I started to accept my gifts and every time I unlocked a new, let's say, communication line or a new, a new stage of channeling, those people, and I call them human angels or whatever you want to call them they magically showed up in my life and were there for me at the perfect time and space. And this made me very comfortable. And I started to trust the process, as <laughs> we say. And it has become a very natural process, as I said. But I would like to, to add, this is my perspective on channeling. You know, it is an innate superpower we all possess. I'm very convinced of that. And just because we haven't been used to it for a very long time, it was so deliberately suppressed and marginalized and shamed and punished. And uh, therefore, also, I believe it's easy to access your channeling abilities by enhancing your intuitive abilities. It's not as simple as it seems because we hold a lot of transgenerational trauma around channeling and we need so we need guidance from experienced channelers and that we and learn from from them and it feels like learning from one consciousness to another because i think that's how we learn as humans you know from one human to another yes and it's passed on and passed passed exactly. passed through as one supports another i was thinking about I was always fascinated by channeling and, you know, I'm a psychologist by training, so I'm constantly studying people. I can't help it. And I'm constantly profiling people. And so when I started on my adult spiritual awakening journey, I'll call it when I probably 20, 23 years ago or so, I always wanted to, I would be fascinated by the channels, but I never thought that I was one really, or I was waiting for somebody to give me permission to be a channel. And then one day, a few years ago, I spent an entire coaching session with my coach talking about somebody else who was saying that she was a channel and she was very clearly not channeling, but I was so upset by that. And finally, my coach said, I think it's time for you to admit that you, who you actually are, which is a channel. 
And I was so relieved by that, but there was something in that, that I was, I was so, I was so mired down by other people doing this thing. And why wasn't I doing this thing? Well, I had been doing it all along, but to acknowledge it was to your point, one of those kind of turning points in my own, my own experience with channeling, if that makes sense. Oh, definitely. I had the same kind of the same experience. I was talking to my coach at that time who was channeling and then she said okay and now we turn it around and now you channel for me <laughs> I was just like, what there's performance um, anxiety there i feel <laughs> of course coaching your coach yes <laughs> channeling yes. and that's when this aspect of mine from inner earth came through for the first time very consciously and this was i was mind blown obviously and then I was, I shut down again. I regressed because it was quite overwhelming. So there needs a lot of calibration time as well to really embra embrace channeling. I think there are people who can channel like this, you know, from one moment to another, and then it's there. For me, it was a gradual, gradual process. And I'm so ever so grateful for all the people who helped me to unlock all those intuitive powers. That is just so wonderful. And it brings up a good point about how channels turn on mm -hmm. and what we do with it after. There is this psychological theory around how people change. And one of the things that we see is when you have a life-changing event, like channeling somebody from inner earth for the first time, or there were, there was a few years ago, I was in Vegas at a retreat with Jennifer and a few other people and a channel came through somebody sort of unexpectedly, very unexpectedly, and told us all the things that were going to be happening in 2020. I thought we had three years, but we actually had three months before the world shut down. And, you know, just experiences like that create the conditions for you to lean in and embrace and integrate the new perspective or to really shut down again. And sometimes I think that happens when we don't know what to do with the information or we wonder, am I going crazy Am I losing my mind? And those are the couple of things that I see coming up over and over right now. And I'm on a mission to change that narrative because we know that they're not going crazy. Although there is a fine line, don't you think, between being crazy and being a channel? Sometimes it can feel that way, depending on the frequency that is coming through. It's true. And again, there is a phenomenon with pilots who go very high up and leave uh, and and the, the higher up we go from Earth, the less dense our magnetic field becomes. So astronauts, for example, they start channeling as soon as they are uh, in space because there is no magnetic field around Earth that keeps the photonic uh, information from the sun floating in. So And when they go back to Earth, their abilities diminish again. So they shut down again. So this is a very interesting process. And with the earth, and we, we, we all know that, or yeah, there is this magnetic pole shift happening. I think we are more, we are overdue and the magnetic pole starts shifting rapidly now. And the more that happens, the less dense our magnetic field becomes. And therefore there is a natural phenomenon happening with the golden nebula photon belt, photon belt and the magnetic pole shift and that is all interwoven that we are getting more and more that we are getting back our our channeling abilities and therefore it is really important and i understand why there is this urgency uh, of helping other people supporting everybody who wants to to really integrate their psychic abilities. And there is another thing too, a societal thing, because with AI expanding so rapidly, we need our channeling abilities to really discern, to discern what is true and what is not, and what is false information. This is such a bad thing to say, but uh, information that is not aligned with our highest mm -hmm. divine, let's say. Yes, I mean, discernment, the spiritual intelligence codes that came through in um, through Marisol are really designed to create the clear channel from the neurological perspective. And one of the keys is discernment, having a discerning eye, discerning frequencies, and really paying attention to what is true and what is not true, because there is a lot of false information and false, just false stories floating around in the 
the ethers that are creating confusion and uncertainty and despair, worry, and even the clear channels that I know recently have said, and maybe you've experienced this too. Sometimes we wonder, am I just making this all up? Is this just a dream? And when you're in your clarity, of course, you know, you're not making it up and you know that it is not a dream, but there can be certain frequencies that get transmitted that would suggest otherwise. And it is important to have the clear channel available so that we can discern, is this even mine or is this just in the etheric right now? Mm. Yeah, I believe so too. There is a lot of distortion around and therefore it is more, more important than ever to really develop our channeling abilities within ourselves to really use the intuition. And you described this so beautifully, Robin, a few weeks ago, I believe, where you talked about the enhancement from our intuition to channeling. It is a natural and organic process. And we have to, but the first step is to really acknowledge our intuition as a compass we, we can use to calibrate uh, ourselves and then from there on find our way to, to our ch to channeling. I love this. I have one, I think one final question. There may be more, but this is the final one that I can, that is coming through right now. And that has to do with how do you know, how do you know, how do you discern if the information that is coming through is from your channel or if it's from somewhere else, we'll say. In other words, if you're making it up or if it's coming from your thoughts or something like that. I definitely know that it is not coming from my channel when it is not in uh, pure and utter love. And when it is not completely supportive and in any way in having my back, let's say. I try to, or I establish a ritual which I begin my day with. I have this vortex created and this vortex is such a powerful tool to really calibrate myself again, using it as a compass, as I said. And when I have established this vortex, there is no distortion happening because I am, I am sovereign and I am in, in charge. And then I can easily let my channeling abilities flow. This is really beautiful. That is and such a beautiful advice too, is to create the container for the channel to be in so that you know that it is clear. It's like clearing the temple. Exactly. Yeah. It is a cleaning, uh, clearing ritual. Yes, that's this true. This is beautiful. Thank you so much. Miriam, where can people find you and how can they work with you? They can find me on my website, miriam-wiedemann.de. I'm German, so you you are going to include this in the information. Yes, also. we will put in the in the show notes for sure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm on Instagram and Facebook too. And yeah, I offer one on one, one on one sessions, galactic astrology sessions, and I offer packages for a broader picture, let's say, where I where I offer the perspective on many aspects of soul evolution let's say it is a journey and i invite everybody to really experience it because it's a beautiful thing and it's high time to go galactic it is high time to go galactic because we are galactic exactly thank you so much for being here with us and everyone i will see you all next time thank you robin you're welcome